1972, a French factory began importing high-quality rare uranium ore from Oklo in Africa's Gabon Republic. Many quickly began to wonder where they had acquired such a difficult thing to make. It turned out that the uranium had come from a place which should have rewritten the history books, yet it seems to have been quietly brushed into the archives of the past. They found the site of origin had functioned as a large-scale nuclear reactor. Amazingly though, this reactor was in operation some 1.8 million years ago and was functioning for over 500,000 years. These unbelievable claims were not made lightly or indeed by anybody. They were conclusions by some of the greatest minds on Earth. For example, Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, former head of the United States Atomic Energy Commission and Nobel Prize winner for his work in the synthesis of heavy elements, explained to the press why he believed it wasn't a natural phenomenon and must have been a man-made nuclear reactor. He stated that for uranium to burn in a reaction, very precise conditions are needed. The water must be extremely pure, much purer than exists anywhere naturally. The material, U-235, is also necessary for this type of nuclear fission to occur, one of the isotopes not found naturally in uranium. Additionally, several specialists in reactor engineering have also come forward to testify that they believe the uranium in Oklo could not have been rich in U-235 enough for a reaction to take place naturally. It must have, somehow, been a man-made operation. And new research has only deepened the mystery confirming that water regulated the nuclear reactions in a cyclic pattern similar to that of a geyser. Alex Meshik and his colleagues at Washington University of St. Louis have determined that the Oklo reactor, which comprises several separate sites, ran for 30 minutes and then shut off for two and a half hours before starting over. The time is characteristic of water infiltrating rocks and then being boiled off once reaction started, Meshik told the press. When the water all boiled away, the reaction stopped until new water percolated back down. This geyser-like activity also prevented a runaway reaction. It's amazing it didn't explode, Message said. Instead, it efficiently released energy in short pulses for an extremely long period of time. The nuclear fuel at Oklo was uranium, specifically U-235. And currently, U-235 only makes up about 0.7% of the uranium found naturally on Earth. Just who could have possibly been around over 1.8 million years ago? Or, more specifically, able to enrich uranium and create nuclear power? Is man's history on Earth really that old? It seems, according to numerous nuclear specialists and the compelling evidence they present, that is exactly the case. Many people assume that ancient astronaut theories are nothing more than modern pseudoscience, holding no credence within reality. However, the idea of ancient visitors from other planets in distant galaxies has been around since the beginning of human history. Although the theory has undoubtedly gained tremendous popularity over the past few decades, nearly every ancient tribe and civilization found on Earth, regardless of geographical location, have a story regarding visitors from other planets. Our choice of the most compelling would have to be that of the Dogons in Africa, one of the oldest surviving tribes on Earth. They not only have a legend which tells of alien visitors, but they retained invaluable data, reliable knowledge which was passed down from generation to generation, details surrounding their ancient visitors' home solar system, details that at the time modern civilization had yet to discover. Known as the Nomo, the Dogon tell of giant reptilians who had traveled here from a small sister star of Sirius, a star with a 40-year orbit that the Dogon still celebrate every 40 years. What is remarkable about their claims, however, is the details they give regarding the Sirius system and indeed the Nomo's home star a tiny star which our modern telescopes did not confirm the existence of until several years after the first cataloguing of this information. Another strange reaction to these remarkable experiences within these ancient cultures is a wanting to replicate the appearance of these entities. These interplanetary visitors often brought gifts in the form of knowledge. Due to these revelations, 
many of our ancestors have perceived these beings as godlike. The teaching of agriculture, the gift of hops, cannabis, the Dogon state that hemp was a gift from the Nomo. Indeed, the dog star is the source of the planet's name. Even strawberries, among many other living things, and ingenious techniques of managing such, have been said throughout antiquity, indeed throughout the world's cultures, to have first arrived here on Earth in the form of gifts from these beings. The dogu, dogu meaning clay figure, could be seen as commemorative creations in memory of such entities visiting our planet in the past. Such an extraordinarily rare, life-changing and undoubtedly profitable event. Made during the late Jomon period over 10,000 years ago, made with such tremendous skill and artistic accuracy, you have to wonder if these were not created with the purpose of remembering a detailed image of our guests' appearances, then what else were they created for? Or more specifically, to look like? Interestingly, some of the figures appear to have been deliberately created missing limbs, resting on intricately made crutches. Was this done with a likeness to real beings, possibly battle-scarred from previous more hostile encounters? The Incas, Mayans, Aztecs, Dogons, indeed anywhere you look within antiquity, you will inevitably be confronted with fantastic tales of ancient visitors. Even detailed knowledge of things so far out, we cannot even confirm if what they say is true. With so many similar legends found all across the world regarding ancient astronauts, it's safe to say the truth is out there. We know more about the surface of our moon than we do of the bottoms of our oceans. To date, we have managed to explore a mere 5% of the floors of Earth's oceans. Much remains to be learned and indeed explored. Unimaginable mysteries, treasures, and the possible odd sea monster could all still be lying deep within the blackness, irretrievable and thus undiscovered. Our oceans are the lifeblood of the planet, covering more than 70% of its surface. Responsible for the driving forces behind weather systems, the regulation of global seasonal temperatures, and ultimately, supporting all living organisms in one way or another. Just what could be laying upon our ocean floors? Lost relics from a bygone era? Possible crashed ancient alien craft? Indeed, we have already discovered the enigmatic El Tannin antenna, which was discovered resting deep upon the Antarctic seabed, found some decades ago. Yet, what else could be lurking down there, just waiting to be discovered? State Department emails, files, and documents made available to the public by way of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, which pertain to the United States government's full awareness of a UFO crash site near the populated northern town of Igloolik, northern Canada, very near to the borders of Greenland. This object subsequently sinking to a great depth it then began to emit a mysterious ping, a possible distress beacon, a sound which for some time began to annoy a large number of the locals. Since this event a few years ago, the strange ping has seemingly disappeared, and the fate of its source remains a mystery. Just what this thing was may remain a mystery, or at least kept secret, hidden away from most of the public domain.